Hi, I'm Eric Siegel, and today I'm going to be reviewing and running the DMIR2884 Yellowstone steam engine set from MTH. This Yellowstone engine was ordered from the MTH 2009 Volume 1 catalog. In fact, it was featured on the cover of that catalog. Now, the model number of this set is 20-3379-1E, and the set includes the Yellowstone engine that you see here, and then these six ore cars back here. As you can see, the Yellowstone is a gigantic engine. It measures over 32 inches long, and the minimum curve requirement for this engine to run properly is 072. To give you an idea of how big this engine is, right here I've got the Mohawk that I got last year, and even though the Mohawk is a pretty good size engine, you can see that in comparison to the Yellowstone, the Mohawk looks pretty tiny. The road name on this engine is Duluth Misabi and Iron Range. The DMIR was a Minnesota railroad that hauled a lot of iron ore, and they ordered these big powerful locomotives to haul those long heavy ore trains, and in fact that's why this engine comes with six ore cars. Most of the Yellowstones were built by Baldwin in the late 30s and early 40s. They got the nickname Yellowstone because the original purchaser of this engine configuration was the Northern Pacific Railroad. They had some rails near Yellowstone National Park, and so these engines got the nickname Yellowstone. Now, when the DMIR purchased this configuration, they changed it a little bit. They added an all-weather cab, they added an extra set of wheels down here to support the cab, and a few other modifications, but they still retain the nickname Yellowstone, even though they ran in Minnesota. Now, interestingly enough, the number 225 Yellowstone has been preserved and is in a museum in Duluth, Minnesota. So if you're ever rail fanning up in Minnesota, you can check it out. The Yellowstone is a 2884 articulated steam engine. Now if you're new to steam engines and you don't know what 2884 articulated means, I'll explain that to you real quick. When it comes to American steam engines, you'll hear people say numbers like 260 or 284, or in this case a 2884. Those numbers refer to the wheel arrangement on the engine. The first number always refers to the number of wheels on the lead truck. The last number always refers to the number of wheels on the trailing truck. And then the numbers in between refer to the number of drive wheels per drive section. So, for example, on this engine, we've got two wheels up here on the lead truck, a set of eight drive wheels here, another set of eight drive wheels here, and then four wheels here on the trailing truck. So therefore, this is designated as a 2884. So now you know what those numbers are all about. Okay, so now what is an articulated steam engine? Well, it might help if I start by showing you what is not an articulated steam engine. If I can find that Mohawk engine again, let me see here, Abracadabra. Ah, there it is. Okay, this is a non-articulated steam engine. The drive wheels are connected to the rest of the engine and the entire engine moves as one unit. Now let's get rid of the Mohawk. And now let's look at the Yellowstone. The Yellowstone, this front set of drivers, can turn independently of the rest of the engine. That's an articulation point. This is what an articulated steam engine is. It has a set of drivers that can turn independently of the rest of the engine. So now you know what an articulated steam engine is. So now that I've gone over all that, let's take a look at the engine itself. Just about everything on this engine is made of metal. You've got lots of die cast metal and metal wheels. About the only thing that's not metal is maybe the headlight lens, the coal load, and the plastic window inserts. Other than that, it's all metal, so it's got a really nice weight to it. Starting off on the front of the engine, we've got a nice coupler cut bar here. There's a chain connecting it to a dummy O-scale coupler. There's also a separately packaged dummy O-gauge coupler that you can put in here instead if you want to double head the engine. We've got some nice decking detail here, nice handrail detail. And then right here, of course, we've got our headlight and our number boards. The drive section of the engine down here is really well done. The valve gear is really busy, and when the engine is in motion in a couple minutes, you'll see all this stuff moving around, and it looks really nice. There's lots of separately applied piping and so forth that looks really great, and the metal here has been chemically darkened so it's not too shiny. Up here on top of the engine, we've got a nice mixture of separately applied details and some molded in details as well. Got a nice separately applied bell here, lots of separately applied handrails and valves and so forth. We've got some hand painted details here and here. We've got working classification lights, and these will come on in a minute when I start the engine. 
Here's our smokestack with our smoke unit inside. On the cab here we've got a vent that opens and closes. The paint job on this engine is first rate. I couldn't find any problems whatsoever. And all the signs and placards on the engine, like this builder's plate here, are clearly legible under a magnifying glass. Back here towards the cab we've got some more stuff to talk about. The doors here, they do open and close. They are sprung, so they'll snap shut like that, which is nice. The cab windows, they do open and close, and they go both ways like that, which is nice. The steps here are molded in. I'm not crazy about the molded in steps, but it's not a deal breaker. There are separately applied grab irons on either side of the door. The trailing truck here has nice detail on the side frames. The firebox has nice detail both molded in and separately applied and we have safety tread on all the walkways. It's hard to get the camera to look inside the cab because it's an all-weather cab and it's closed up like this, but on the inside we've got two figures, one for the fireman, one for the engineer. There's a detailed back head with painted valves and gauges. There's a firebox glow that operates when the engine is running, and then there's a soft yellow cab light that lights up the cab when the engine is on. And then finally we've got the wireless tether here, which connects to the tender where all the digital components for the engine are located. The tender is also very nicely done. We've got this gorgeous DMIR logo here that's flawlessly applied. We've got real coal up here in the tender, which gives it a nice prototypical look. We've got nicely detailed trucks down here. We've got some nice molded in details here. Nice little chains here for a realistic look. Separately applied ladders and grab irons everywhere. Another separately applied bell back here. These panels here lift up and expose the PS2 controls for volume, smoke, and then a battery charge port. And then back here we have a working backup light. The set also comes with these six DMIR ore cars. They're nice ore cars, but they're not the most detailed things I've ever seen. They have some separately applied details, but they also have a fair amount of molded in detail. But when you consider that the price of the set with the six ore cars is only $100 more than the price of the Yellowstone engine by itself, you're getting six ore cars for $100. That's a steal. I think they look great. They look even better, I think, if you weather them, like this one here. But either way, it's a great deal. Six ore cars for $100, you can't beat that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is start this engine up, let you hear some of the sounds, and then I'll run it around the layout for a minute. That about does it for this review. I'm Eric Siegel, and I'll see you next time.